workers day increasing minimum wage won't worsen inflation TUC I am Bola Oba and this is plus politics Workers day increasing minimum wage won't worsen inflation TUC the ongoing negotiations for a new minimum wage have been lingering following the inability of the federal government, state governments, private sector and organized labor to reach a consensus on the issue. President Bola Tinumbu gave this indication in his speech during this year's International Workers' Day celebration in Abuja on Wednesday. The President of Nigeria had in January set up a tripartite committee consisting of the government, that is federal and state, labor and private sector representatives to review the 30,000 Naira minimum wage introduced by former President Muhammadu Buhari's administration, which technically uh, expired uh, on the 17th of last month. The government failed to announce the new minimum wage at the May Day celebration on Wednesday as it had not accepted Labour's demand or indeed a conclusion had not been reached by the tripartite uh, committee. Also, the President's Special Advisor on Information and Strategy, Mr. Bayo Onuga, in an interview faulted workers' insistence on the 615,000 Naira minimum wage. He said the government and labor unions had not agreed on the amount for the minimum wage. But the president of Nigeria Labor Congress, Joe Ajero, defended workers' demand, insisting that the organized labor would not accept any amount that would impoverish its members while his counterpart, President of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, Festa Sosifu, says increasing the minimum wage for civil servants from 30,000 Naira to 615,000 Naira won't worsen Nigeria's inflation rate, which stood at 33.20% as of March 2024. Comrade Sifu said the organized Labor proposed 615,000 as the new minimum wage for workers to confront current socioeconomic realities, a view backed by Nigeria Labor Congress NLC's leader, Joe Ajero. In an interview on Wednesday, the NLC boss said the proposed 615,000 Naira minimum wage was arrived at after an analysis of the current economic situation and the needs of an average Nigerian family of six. He said the last minimum wage of 30,000 Naira expired on April 18th. He described as mischievous the pay rise of between 25 to 35% for civil servants across various consolidated salary structures announced by the federal government on Tuesday. We have prayed for a two-year lifespan for the new act with automatic adjustment triggered by inflation suppressing 7.5%. Every employer with five employees and above must comply. We demand robust monitoring and strict penalties for non-compliant state governments. We have based our figures on real data gathered from our responses nationwide ensuring that our demand reflects the true cost of living for an average family. Our message is clear. Anything less than a living wage condemns workers to poverty. That the government restrain itself from the use of violence in civil engagement within the industrial relations sphere, an immediate reversal of the unilateral hike in electricity tariff, entrollment of service reflective tariff, and stoppage of segregation of consumers. 
We are now being joined by Lagos State NLC Chairperson, Comrade Fumi Shesi, Journalist and PDP Chieftain Larry Olayenka from Oshun State has also joined us. We also have joining us two economists, Paul Alaje and Okpayemi Taiwo. Uh, we, ladies first, let's start with the chairperson of Legacy's NLC. Uh, Comrade Chesi, how would you want to further, uh, further make the point that your uh, colleagues made at the, at the rally in Abuja yesterday? Thank you very much. And uh, once again, let me um, greet Nigerian workers a happy Workers' Day yesterday. Um, well, our expectation was cut short yesterday. We were expecting an announcement of a living wage to the workers across uh, the nation from the presidency, from the federal government. But um, nothing um, like that happened yesterday. And we know that it will happen like that because uh, the labor leaders have been coming out to come and condemn the like attitude of the federal government in food dragging to the extent that the conclusion of the minimum wage uh, travel type committee is still yet on board. So uh, we know that uh, since there was no conclusion of the committee work, we also know that uh, there are the no announcement that yesterday. Uh, the NLC and the TUC leadership, they have come together to agree on uh, a living wage that will be um, just be the best for the workers with the socioeconomic indices and the parameters that were used to calculate the minimum wage that should be that will be commensurate with uh, the job that Nigerians are offering currently and the socioeconomic uh, situation. So 615,000 Naira has been agreed by the both labor centers that this is what will be best for the workers in this country. I support that idea. But having said that too, um, the travel that committee, they are still discussing, they are on the negotiation table, on the side of the workers, on the side of the government, and also on the side of the uh, employers of labor, both in the public and the private sector. Let all of them sit down uh, without uh, further delay and let them come up. Commissioner, uh, 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 it is just inevitable that uh, one must ask you that do you, as a labor leader, truly believe that this economy? Can accommodate a minimum wage of six hundred fifteen thousand naira, or is is this a negotiation or a negotiating strategy by the labor movement? Uh, what what's your honest belief? We are still on the negotiation table. Anything could happen. It's just a proposal, and it's just a. Uh, in 2019, paper proposed something higher than what was finally agreed upon by the committee that negotiated then. So we are still on the negotiation table. And uh, but the only thing that we are asking is for a fair deal from all the sides. Um, the labor should be fair to the employers of labor. Employers of labor as well should also be fair to labor. And also the government should be fair to both the employers of labor and to labor itself. Okay, so uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, but uh, we are not stiff neck and uh, we are not having a hard shoulder. So it's just a negotiation. And we are still negotiating. And okay, I'll come back to you, comrade. I'll come back to you, comrade. Uh, let me go to your colleague on this show. Um, uh, Larry Alayinka, uh, you being a, you being a chieftain of the PDP, uh, and it does seem that the PDP is playing the opportunism card on this issue 
because uh, your, your presidential candidate in the last presidential elections and the official spokesperson of your party, indeed, what your official what the official spokesperson of your party said yesterday was a border was a borderline uh, so like pushing the envelope in the direction of calling for anarchy so uh, what is your own personal take of this umbroglio between labor and the government federal and states on the issue of minimum wage well, well thanks for having me this evening my position is is not too diff different from the position of the labor movement. I, will, I only disagree with the labor movement on the issue of uh, what they are proposing. Six hundred fifteen thousand naira as minimum wage to me is far, far, way, far ridiculous. It's, it's something that, that that I don't, I don't, I don't think anyone can even see that again to discuss. Aside that, you 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 you, you agree with me that that. For instance, someone who was earning like hundred thousand naira per month this time, this time last year, if he's still earning the same hundred thousand naira per month this year now, if what is any is, is in the region of like the value of that hundred thousand naira is in the region of twenty five thousand naira last year. So you, I, I don't believe that Nigerian workers should should remain at the level at the at, at the level of uh, of salary that they were last year. But I do also believe that labor movement should, should be about salary increment, salary increment all the time. We've been increasing salary and and and, and nothing has changed. Because the moment the moment you get to increase salary, even even what we are what we are buying now will increase like triple almost immediately. So to me, I don't see increment of salary as solution to anything. It has never it has, it has never solved any problem. And even if you increase salary, if we increase minimum wage to one million now, it will not cover the problem because because inflation will go alongside that increment. And again, I don't know I don't know how the labor movement how they are handling this because all along salary increment has always been about about public service, government workers. What happened to that person that is working in a in a beer parlor, for instance? What happened to that worker that is working in a, in, in, in a laundry? What happened to that worker that is working in, in a supermarket? As of today, we see people that, that, that receive as, as cheap as 20000 dollars per month. What is the labor movement doing about them? So it's not just about coming out labor movement. We are talking about federal government workers, state government workers. What about the workers in the... You, you talk about organized private sector, the one that are organized. Uh -oh. Oh, what about the one that you cannot, oh, okay. what about the one that you cannot even see? So to me, I agree that there should be there should be review of salary across board, both both in the private and public sector. But I don't agree with uh, this uh, notion of uh, because uh, if, if we are going to be honest with ourselves, the the level of inflation that we have because I don't I'm not a, I, 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 I'm not educated as in the area of statistics, but I can tell you that from 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 the from this place that I'm, that I'm talking from in Abuja, air, from here to the airport this time last year, boat will take me three thousand six hundred naira. From here to the airport today, from here to the airport, the same boat will take me like ten thousand naira. So if we take ten naira, three thousand, it's like three, it's like like three hundred percent. Increment, or at least it's, 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 it's like, 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 you know, like, 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 two hundred percent increment. So, and that is what has happened to almost every sector. Petrol was like, I think, was one sixty five or so. It is now like six hundred, seven hundred. Well, so if you are looking at it from that, from that angle, something that was sold for two hundred naira before is now being sold for six hundred naira. So, should we, can we can we now match marry that with with request for with demand for six fifteen thousand six thousand naira? We will look at what we were, what we were buying before. What are we buying now? What we were buying before was hundred naira. We are buying two hundred naira now. So it means that if, if your salary was thirty thousand naira before, it should now be like ninety thousand naira. That is my own layman. I'm not an economist. I'm just a journalist. Okay. So that's my own layman. My own layman. I I believe I agree that there should be review of salary of Nigerians across board. I also want to uh, but that. how would you how would you want to respond to the fact that uh, 
the federal government unilaterally uh, without uh, necessarily forsaking its participation in the tripartite committee, the federal government unilaterally uh, made an increase in the consolidated salary uh, for, uh, structure. So how would you want to respond to that? And, and uh, on that... Well, 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 for me, uh, uh, for me, uh, for me, that shouldn't have happened. There was a committee set up by the, by the government. The committee was sitting. I believe that whatever should come out as 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 that as, as the new minimum wage to be a free, as a result of the of the of, of the work of the committee. I also want to also say that the federal government did that just the way labor also did their own asking for six fifteen. You see, everybody like 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 like, 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 like the legal chairman just said, everybody is looking for negotiation. I believe that the federal government also pushed that to the table. So you have pushed six fifteen. Let me also put that five percent, so that we have something to begin to not talk about. Is everybody? Okay, okay. I'll come, come back to you. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, uh, Larry. Uh, let me go to to the comrade, uh, lady comrade. Uh, your colleague believes that the uh, that the prayer or the the request for uh, for I, I, I'll, I'll come I, I'll come back to you, uh, lady comrade. Uh, we have we have an economist uh, joining us now, Paul Alaje. Paul. Uh, Welcome to Plus Politics. Is Paul there? Paul Alaje? Okay, in the interim, I'll go back to Lady, lady Comrade there, Shesi. Uh, uh, on the one hand, your colleague Larry believes that uh, the 615 proposition was a to him a bit outrageous, uh, quite unrealistic, and that uh, like most reasonable uh, persons have also opined that this will just be a galvanizing force uh, to the to the inflationary inflationary trend that the, the, the giving a good life to workers should not be should not necessarily revolve around salary increment alone how would you want to re respond to that uh commercial thank you very much uh, my heart bleeds uh sometimes when people react and uh, their reaction is that they should throw uh, uh food to the labor as they throw to a dog they should just throw something to the labor and then uh, people don't really think that labor they deserve to have a living wage so if you have to look at the current realities on ground now what do people really think that would be the best for labor as the minimum wage we know what is the best for us now because we are also going to the market if you have to look at those we have three arms of government the executive the legislative and the judiciary how much is the salary of a legislator? How much is the salary of a senator in this country? And they did not create a separate market for labor, for, for workers, for laborers like us. No separate market. We, as they are human beings, we are also human beings. We also deserve a good life. We deserve to also give a good life to our, our offspring too our children and our family they also deserve the best so who is now thinking that we don't deserve the best of life that we don't deserve the best of everything those who are in the government those who are leading uh, okay us, uh, children are not uh, uh, the okay. outside uh, so what we, are about, we also deserve the best come if you see that 650,000 is not the best what do they think is the best for us? Uh, see, I, I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll come back to you. Fortunately, we have two economists who have joined us now. Paul Alaje, good to see you. Good again. Hey, uh, thank you so very much for having me. A beautiful evening to you, sir. I, I wish you the same. Uh, Paul, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to partisans since the program started because uh, Lady Comrade who is the chairperson of NLC Lagos State 
uh, inevitably in matters like this will be a partisan. Uh, my friend, Larry Alayinka, is a known uh, chieftain of the PDP. Now talking to a professional and an economist who should be dispassionate and not partisan about issues. What is your take of this embroglio between organized labor, uh, the private sector, organized private sector, and the government, federal and state, particularly on the proposition of labor that what they believe to be reasonable uh, take home pay uh, is uh, six hundred and fifteen thousand naira. I would want to respond. I would want to uh, fire your open salvo. Well, uh, uh, labor, they said they want 615,000 uh, naira or 40 or whatever amount they want, over 600. When they do that, know that the price of a bag of rice will range between 400 to about 700,000. Uh, this is because when the first, hello, are you still with me, sir? We, we are perfectly with you. We are perfectly with you. Yeah. Hello. So, because this is because uh, when you check the history of minimum wage in Nigeria, and you want to start that from um, 1981, where minimum wage for the first time was in was fixed as 125. It was about 50 percent of that was a bag of rice, and that was equivalent of 204 dollars, where the first time minimum wage was fixed in Nigeria. Subsequently, go ahead, go ahead. We can hear you. Subsequently. Minimum wage was increased to 250 in 1991. In 2004, minimum wage was increased to 5,500 in Nigeria. After that, we saw minimum wage got increased to 9,000. After that, in 2000 and, um, uh, I think 2011, minimum wage went to 18,000. So at the time it was 18,000, exchange rate was also, has also improved significantly, even though it was a much devalued exchange rate that we had at the time. In 2018, however, uh, to 19, when we have President Buhari in office, a commission was set up where minimum wage also uh, went to 30,000 naira. And unfortunately, that is the minimum wage we still have in Nigeria today. When this was done, a bag of rice was 9,300. And um, we now saw the major devaluation in price price of bag of rice to about 16,000. Eventually, bag of rice at 16,000, government agreed was going to pay 30,000 minimum wage as if those were not involved. What we have seen today is that even government improved minimum wage to about 40,000. When you convert that to the dollar, and this is just the beginning of my conversation, I don't know how, how much time I have, you need to do this in the context of, of today's reality of what I said rate is. And the commodity I've used over time, which is the bag of rice. A bag of rice today is in fact more than uh, 60,000 naira. In some markets, 70,000 naira, 60,000 naira. If you look at exchange rate, as of today, naira was about 1,390. For the charity, you say 1,050. Now, how much in dollar are we paying labor? Perhaps we are paying labor about $30 uh, per, 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 per month. What does that mean? We are paying labor 30,000. $30, 30, 30 dollars per month means we are paying one dollar per day now what does the UNDP say what is the recommendation for somebody who will be out of poverty the person must earn at least one dollar 95 cents in nigeria what we are paying people today at forty thousand forty thousand five hundred is to keep people in poverty what it therefore is, is is a practice over the years the practice should be that minimum wage have always stayed between 98 or 100 to about 200. Therefore, the advice to federal government and indeed organized labor is to look within that limit of maybe 100,000 to about 120,000. Uh, uh, it would not be 150,000. Uh, sorry. Uh, or uh, 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 your erudition and your historical perspective on economic matters always trip me. Let me let me quickly go to Okoyemi Taiwo, who is also an economist 
Uh, I was a grown boy in 1975, 1976 when the Doji Salary Award by the Federal Government of Nigeria uh, came to life. And I remember I was, I usually enthusiastically uh, used to assist my single parent mother in our market selling our wares. And I remember that Although they were they were stuck illiterate, but they knew that there was a salary award, and I could remember some of the some of the uh, slangs they used to say in those days. I think I want I want to you That is, you federal workers, uh, you you you've taken uh, Doji's award uh, that inevitably it had to percolate down to them at the market space. Uh, in the background of that uh, anecdote. How would you, what would be the opening salvo to this uh, contentious issue between organized labor, the federal government, the state governments, many of the state governments who have not even, who have not even honored the statutory sanctity of minimum wage 30,000 naira? And uh, this, uh, what would be the opening salvo, please? Okay, let me tell you. Uh, all right, good to be here today, you know. You have, you have given a fantastic background to the the challenge at hand, which has been uh, uh, we call it we might call it a generational problem, so to say. But looking at the uh, the financial figures now, as at this time last year, we are talking about twenty one percent of our inflation rate. All right. So going down the lane, as of twenty twenty four February, we are talking about thirty one point seven percent inflation rate. All right. Now, moving beyond the inflation rate, we talk, there's something called consumer price index. That is looking at the capacity of each consumer to buy products in the market. So what does that mean? That means that the higher purchasing power that you have, most times, does not equate to the capacity of what? Getting commodity. And the balancing equation is what uh, my senior colleague uh, Paul Aradio was trying to analyze to you for we to understand that when you have too much of currency in circulation you are building up you are piling up inflation and what is it what is the layman analysis of inflation meaning you have one million naira with you in your pocket and you're going to use one million naira to buy a bag of rice economically that is not practicable that is not workable that is not sustainable so moving beyond all of this figure what do we need to look at the first thing we should look at is sustainability of our economy beyond your purchasing power if you are starting work as at the age of 20 by the time you get to 60 you're going to retire are you not still coming back to the same economy so if you have been any 50,000 before, or you are earning 30,000. Now, you are preaching 35,000. Or you are now preaching 658,000. And you are being given that amount. Less than six months, bag of rice will be 200,000 naira. So, if you now retire after five years, will you be able to afford that same 200,000 naira bag of rice? The answer is no. And that is why, as an economist, as as financial analysts, what we say to NLC is don't push the government into corner. Give the government a template to work on. I love the NLC, but NLC must understand in the 21st century, purchasing power does not equate to purchasing commodity. It's not the same. Look at the affordability of commodity and how do we have affordability of commodity? We should look at price control. We should look at price regulation. We should look at what we call economic palliative for the SME holders. Because the SME holders have run out of our economy. The civil servant. The civil servant has run the economy. The SME that run the economy. Some some uh economists and some uh uh uh, uh, socioeconomic analysts tend to want to believe that price control is, is in itself 
anasema to good good uh, price this uh, 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 to to the market reason being that they believe that you should incentivize productivity encourage encourage manufacturers and producers to increase productivity and let the supply side supply side uh, bring the demand side to a reasonable level of equilibrium so when i'm hearing price control from somebody like you who is an economist i'm thinking okay here come here we come again economics you could have 10 economics with 10 opinions on one issue you are like lawyers i'll come to you i'll come back to you but let me quickly go to lady uh lady comrade Chossi. uh my distinguished comrade you have had your three other colleagues from the gentleman who ordinarily should be should be levitating on the partisan opportunism that, that this case seems to present. Lady Alarinka is speaking to patriotism now and he's saying he believes that 615 is a bit too outrageous. He never used the word outrageous, but uh, that is my understanding of his position. Paul Alaje went into historical, you know, historical uh, enumeration of how how minimum wage legislations have in themselves uh, precipitated or nourished the demon of inflationary trend. And he used uh, the pricing of an item that most of us can identify with, a bag of rice. Apparently also an economist thinks that there may be other incentives that labor ought to be pushing government to attend to uh, like providing affordable housing like making sure that we do we perfect energy transition especially in in the area of vehicular energy use say from an average of 600 600 and something naira now per liter of pms or 1,000 plus per liter of of uh, of diesel to like CNG that is average of less than 300 naira. Uh, comrade, how would you respond to some of these opinions calling for caution, calling for a bit of you know maybe that Aluta flag not too red, not too red. Uh, how would you respond to that, lady, uh, comrade Chelsea? Thank you very much. I can see their sentiments, and I can see that uh, they actually, you know, um, um, being patriotic in the sense that uh, they are thinking that Nigeria is bleeding, and so the labor should not also add to the bleeding of the nation. But let us be factual. Um, the same sentiment should also be shared along the path of those who are our leaders. Um, uh, everybody knows. Um, uh, Please excuse me. Everybody knows the salaries of those in the legislative arm of government. Everybody knows that they are not also ready to also share in the pains that everybody is passing through in this country. If that is the if is the same thing that the national salaries, incomes, and wages commission is the one that is paying the salaries of everybody that is known to all of us. Not that some particular sector, like the sacred cow, and the workers, the laborers that are till, tilling the ground and now laying the golden eggs, and now the ones that are suffering for the sin that is not our own, for the sin of our leaders that have already made this country dry and left us in this situation. It calls for an action from uh, workers. The action that I mean is that. The um, Mr. Lere, or some, uh, the person that spoke before the last uh, economics, has rightly told us how much is the price of, of a bag of rice in the market compared to what we bought, what we normally buy the bag of rice in 2019, where we agreed to 30,000 naira minimum wage. Is it the same thing? Is it the same thing that we have to talk about transportation? Is it the same thing that we talk about rent? Is it the same? The worst of it is about our feeding. 
in developed countries, what government does there is to subsidize the food that people eat so that people can have adequate and access to um, an adequate diet and feeding. It, and also in some countries, government also subsidizes. In fact, if you don't have houses, they will give you a council flat where you can be residing. They will even pay you some money, social uh, uh, status. They will give you some money to survive. But in this country, even you that you are working, your uh, take home, is it even anything that you have to be proud of? The way we are surviving now, currently, in fact, we is only through the help of God that we are surviving this current onslaught against the workers by the government. Immediately, the first subsidy was uh, was re was removed. The first people that gained were the people that are not in the uh, organized labor, those in the informal sector. They are the ones that made the gains. So if you are not sharing any sentiment for them, please forget it. Immediately, the prices of goods and services went up. Shut up immediately. How much do we buy a, 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 a kilo of fish before? Used to be a kilo of a chicken or fish. Used to be like 1,000 naira, 1,500. But today, a kilo of fish is 4,600 naira. And that is a very tiny three pieces of a... Uh, um uh, uh, okay uh, okay come against the workers come back to you you have been so articulate I, I wonder whether you labor leaders have reacted these lines uh one cannot but empathize uh, with some of the sentiments, you know, you uh, so with, with you on some of the sentiments you shared. Uh, Lady Alayinka, she gave yeah, a she I gave a well. polite she gave a polite back slap to the political class of which you are of which you are a member. At least, if you are not practically, if you are not say fully uh, a politician, you were once the chief spokesperson of a prominent governor in Nigeria. So you also belong to the, uh, to, to the political class. And she's of the conviction, like many Nigerians, that you people, is that you live in Nirvana or El Dorado, and you have left, you have left everybody else in, in Gogotha. How would you want to respond to that? Well, well, well you see, there's this misconception that workers have because about about politician and and i need to also i need to correct that misconception before i come before i before i continue i heard the the nsc chairman lagos state saying that the legislator collects also amount of money salary this person collects also so amount of salary and the question is the, the workers that let me say the civil servants how many posters how many posters do they print to get to to, to, to get the work to, to get employed as civil servants how many voters did they give money to to get to get employed as, as civil servants then how many people are on their neck as as are today how many people are on their neck how many people are asking them for money you see there's there's a there's a very thick line of people of, 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 of different between politician political office holder as civil servants, I would I, I would prefer to be a civil servant on hundred thousand naira salary to to, to to be in a to be in a political office holder that will collect hundred thousand naira salary. Lily. Because hundred thousand naira salary of political office holder is is lesser. Is 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 not. Is not. Lily. Am I? Lily. Of a civil servant. And Lily. That is the truth. Lily. Yeah. I have to call. I, I I now have to dig in deep into your persona and dig out your original your original vocation. Larry is the Larry who was once a journalist. Is he is he listening to the Larry who is trying to rationalize? I am not. I am not rationalizing anything. I have said it here, and I want to I want to say it again that. Salary should be reviewed. There's no two ways about that. There's no contention about that. 
I am not saying that. I am not saying civil servants should remain at the level that they are. No. Nobody should. Because I said it earlier that what you are getting, what the salary, if, if, if you were on, say, other than another income like this time last year, and you are still on the same other than another now, what you are earning in the least sense of it is about like 25, 30,000 naira. So there should be, there should be a review of minimum wage. There are no two ways about that. Nobody is contesting that. I am not there to contest it. I am not there to contest it. What I'm saying is that, uh, my, 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 what I'm saying is this argument of saying uh, politi politicians collect huge amount of money. Okay, okay. okay. So I, I, I hear you, I hear you. Let me, I'll come back to you, I'll come back to you later. Uh, you've made your point well enough. Uh, at some point, to be honest with you, uh, my intellectual my intellectual persona was rattled. Rattled because I felt you were justifying some of the profligacy and the ostentation. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 is, is, is it, excuse me, excuse me, before, before, before you go, let me also say this. Let me say this. There is no, there is no profligacy in public service without the commandment of civil servants. Nobody should come and tell us that for oh, that's, 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 that that's a topic for another there day. No, we will get to it. You will be invited. I know. Uh, uh, that is the truth. Oh uh, 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 no! That that be another topic for that be a topic for another day. Uh, you you want to push me to an in, uh, an intellectual corner? Ah, uh, Paul Alaje. Uh, no, no. It will come for you. Lady Chelsea will come. Uh, uh, come, Chelsea will come to you. Let's go to the economics now. I want I want to explore. And you know, tap the brains of the two economics in in, in, in the program. Uh, Paul Alaje, you've yeah, had, I can hear you, sir. I'm here. You've had the opinions from the left to to the to the right, and uh, it's just somewhat reasonable that we call in somebody like yourself and Nokoyemi to give us what may be the middle ground i usually tell i usually tell people that in the beauty of a liberal democracy is that uh, it should be a contestation of ideas and we've had the comrade we've had uh larry uh, i i like to take your next line of reasoning from your historical perspective to contemporary challenges that we are facing now relative to the opinions your take thank you so very much i i hear you very clearly and i understand the debate between the uh, representative of labor a woman i have so much respect for and mr Nere, a respected politician and a journalist as well as mr Opa, my colleague in the field of economics but here is it i think over the years since the doji salary to date labor has focused more on monetary value monetary value is really not the problem now when labor provides and they fight for things that has to do with money most of the time we don't have a relatively sustainable solution inflation will catch up and when it caught up with us in the next three four five years we we'll start seeing new demand for payment but what should labor be discussing and I'm talking with those who are the high hierarchy of labor in our country. I think they are this time for one of the wrong demands. Labor demanded that government should buy CNG vehicles. Because in Europe, last year, around November and December, and I saw some representatives of the government scrambling for CNG vehicles. Unfortunately, the Europe, the whole of Europe has announced a ban of production of CNG for environmental reasons. That is what Nigerian labor and federal government want to subject Nigerians to. Think, if there is any, if there is not, labor should establish a research department. It must have the economics in it. Such that we can look at economic reality. That is not the one labor should be demanding for. When you have a family, that's not any income. It's maybe a member of labor or maybe not even organized labor. It is expected in Nigerian context that the man should have Paul, at, at one Paul, life with Paul. Uh, you you are still on, Paul. You are still on. You are still on. But I need to accentuate a point you've just made now. Many Nigerians, indeed, many of us who are educated, don't know 
that LNG and CNG are fossil fuel byproducts too. They may be relatively cleaner than PMS and AGO, but they are fossil fuel byproducts and they are relatively also make it cleaner but environmentally dangerous. They are right. not totally so uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to I, 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 that I, I spoke I spoke vehemently against this at different platforms to say that labor should not be demanding for this. If there is anything to be demanding for is how do we make quality I emphasize the word quality quality of electricity and quantity how do we improve it recently we saw minister of labor from uh, my of nickel power increased cost of energy by over 200 percent nearly 300 percent we complete a band a but we have seen what has happened to electricity rather than having more electricity it's even getting worse off those who are not in band a the band b and the rest electricity company will divert power to band a they will tell you that you are not in band A. In order to make money, unfortunately, in the midst of that increase, the switch of country of Nigeria collapse. We need to focus on the right things. Labor should make demand on how do we make public institution. Labor make demand on how do we make public institution relatively affordable. Not that people will have to pay extreme amounts because they want to go to school. Primary school. The most important. Okay. Let me go to Paul. Please let me go to education. Do we have in secondary school? I'm going somewhere. UND, I mean UNDP, usually every year. Issue what we call HDI, Human Development Index. It's a combination of three things: income, but it's not limited to income. Health. When you compare Nigeria on health, which public primary hospital? And those of us here, we proud to go to, but we want labor. Labor will say, "Give us more money. Money will alone will not solve your problem. It's important to increase your salary to give the country." I don't go against it because it is not your fault that we made an impulsive decision to, to remove uh, subsidy without thinking through it, without planning through it. Because IMF and World Bank mandated us to do same. Meanwhile, Asian Tigers in 1991, there was a report. That Asian Tiger went against IMF and World Bank, then the same organization called it Asian Miracles. In 1945, for a woman to walk around the street of Europe, she has to be an adult. Why? Because she must have been raped by many men. That was after the war. What did Europe do in 30 years? Europe did not suddenly say, We are eating all tariffs. Okay. Europe uh, came up with a Marshall plan. Nigeria has started that plan. Rather than this plan having legislation back up, it never existed. Having budgetary handshake, it never existed. So how do we say that we just pay labor more money? Okay, we uh, uh, Paul, 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 let me go to a point. Let, 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 let me go to a point. Public transport uh, is not there. Rail cannot work it. Uh, uh, let me, no matter what you are paid, even if it's 10 million, it cannot sustain Paul, the Paul, 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 at this, at this juncture, I need to go to a, a point because... Uh, I want to start, uh, you know, we are, we are moving to the denouement of, of the program now. This is about the, the, you know, the last stretch. Okay, I mean, you economists, the two of you economists on the show have been so vehement on the fact that labor should not be focusing alone on monetary increment as rewards. That it may be uh, it may be stimulating or it may ultimately stimulate or galvanize inflationary or worsen the inflationary, the already bad inflationary uh, situation. I would want to wrap it up uh, so that I give your other colleagues too the opportunity to to wrap their opinions up. Okay, me. All right. Okay. So that's a, that. That was that was a very uh, fantastic and a brilliant uh, submission by uh, you know my senior colleague Paul Alaji. Now look at the four critical uh, sector that is ministry we needed: Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, all right, Ministry of Power, all right, the Ministry of Agriculture. Now for all these four ministries, how do we break down their impute? 
to bring out outputs that will affect an ordinary man on the street. That is what I am expecting NLC to discuss with the federal government. I was in the university and I saw ASU. The first, they have 10 agenda as of 2010. The first one was increment of salary. Now, are you saying that all of the subsector of NLC, the only thing they think about is increment of salary? Is that the solution to Nigeria problem? The answer is no. Increment in salary will always give you sporadical increase in inflation. No doubt about that. But if you are ignoring inflation, well, good enough for you, but it's going to be bad enough for the economy. So what do we need? Can we bring down the impute of this major four ministry that I've spoken about? Can we break down their imputes and see how their output will affect an ordinary man on the street, whereby I can leave my house and pay an annual health insurance to the federal government, minimal fee, and I can go to any hospital of my choice in Nigeria, and I will get a quality health care service. Is it possible that there can be a particular education trust fund whereby in different regions, whereby an average youth or student in Nigeria without necessarily means of the education uh, loan by the federal government, going to school from primary school to university without needs of borrowing. Can I do that? That is what we are talking about. Those are the things that can bring sustainability in our economy. Okay, okay, I mean, okay, I mean, salary, okay, salary, salary. Uh, okay, let me let, let me send you off. Thank you very much, okay, I mean, for your wonderful contribution. Uh, Lady Comrade Chase, your turn now uh, to to give us your epilogue. Thank you very much, sir. Indeed, all animals are not equal. That adage is very apt at this time. And for the submission of the economists, what do I expect from them? Uh, I don't expect anything short of what they are talking. But an angry man is an angry man. The workers that are working, laboring, day and night, you are in the studio now, you are not going home. Only God knows whether you are going home today, even if you are not staying uh, for the weekend. So, uh, the nurses, the doctors, they will be working, they will be taking care of the health of people, uh, the teachers, they will be teaching, uh, the lecturers, they will be lecturing professors, they will read, they will put their uh, intelligence to test. And at the end of the day, a politician will come and tell me because he printed the poster, because uh, he paid money to uh, corruption money to people, his salary should be like 12 million, should be like 15 million, even better than professors that are doing research work. Even the nurses that are doing their work, taking care of the patient, even the doctors that are you know, curing diseases and taking care of people. This is a country where we support illegality. In fact, the, the people that are talking, they're supposed to have sympathy and empathy with the workers. That they are even supposed to ask us how we've been able to survive at this time. I have already said it, that those people that they have sympathy for, those are in the uh, informal sector. They have increased the prices of goods and services. Part of it is like the people that are selling fuel now. Marketers, they are holding the fuel. They are all supposed to us. And all these things, the end, uh, the, the, those are the receiving end are the workers. Those in the informal sector, they will make their own gain as the uh, prices of food is increasing. Okay. Will increase okay, come the, right. the person that is selling paper will increase immediately as okay. the price of dollar is increasing. They will increase the prices of all the goods, but the salary remains that. Okay, okay comment. I, I feel you. I, I really, I really feel you, uh, Lady Comment. Lady Comment, she I really feel you. Uh, but we must go, Lady Comment. She let me. Let, we must go. Thank you very much for featuring on on the show. Thank you, Lady Comment. She uh, Lady, thirty seconds. Because, Lady, thirty seconds because I need to get Paul. I uh, give Paul the opportunity to to wrap it up too, Lady. And, and, and I don't want you recriminating with uh, Lady <laughs> Lady Commissioner Jesse because she seems to she seems. 
Ah, unmute, unmute. Unmute your device. Yeah, okay. We, we cannot run Nigeria on emotion and sentiment. This country can only be run around on reality. So, the issue is this. Like, 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 like Mr. Payami said, laborers should not be salary, 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 and salary. If electricity tariff was increased, apartheid was introduced by putting some people in band A and some people in band B and whatever. Labor, I believe, I believe, I expect Labor to, to, to be on the streets on this. These are issues that Labor should be talking about today. We have Nigerians that are on band A, we have Nigerians that are on band F that, that are not qualified to have life for one day. Okay, okay. These are uh, issues we should be talking about. Okay. What price of, uh, what price of fuel was, when some subsidy was removed, and fuel went to that level of 600 naira? What did Labour do that time? Okay, Lere, 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 Lere. So, your point yeah. well made. Your point well made. Uh, I, I think you are also uh, putting a bit of political opportunism into it. Uh, 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 Paul Alaje, give us uh, your wrap up and your wrap up for the show. Thirty seconds. Okay, so I'm um, one president Nubu, and the entire city government to be very fair on Labour. The rate over the years has been between one hundred dollars, which is equivalent of one hundred and thirty to two hundred dollars, about two hundred and fifty to two hundred and sixty. But they should do that, bearing in mind that there will be inflation. That is not permanent solution; is only temporary solution. The permanent solution is to look at the critical sector and provide solution. But my concern about labour that even if government said they will pay labour fifty thousand dollars today, the current labour seems to be toothless. The current labor, so many of the promises that they've made have failed. And I thought because I uh, share a part uh, of my life uh, with uh, I was Paul, really no president of the all Paul, the rest. Paul, and this is not what Paul, I need to know in LC. Uh, uh, Paul, it's a bit disappointing and, and, Paul, and Paul, it's a Paul, I think that's not fair. Uh, we may have another program, uh, another show for that. Uh, because in the last one year, in the last one year, labor has labor has asserted itself minimum of uh, of three to four times. Uh, I think that's not fair. Uh, but this is what we have to leave it for today. It's quite uh, an it's quite an engaging, very intellectually stimulating session. I really want to thank every one of you, lady comrade. I shall see the chairperson, NLC Nogo State, Lady Alayinka, a prominent uh, journalist and uh, politician. Uh, Paul Alaje comes with a very rich antecedents and profile as, a, as an economist and public analyst. And Okoyemi Taiwo, who I'm engaging with for the first time. I really want to thank you all. Thank you, gentlemen and lady. Thank you so much, sir, for having us. I am. Thank you for having me. Bola Hoba. Have a good evening.